Welcome design students. In this video we're going to continue creating our ammo crate game asset. We've already learned how to unwrap the UVs and apply a texture in Photoshop and create and apply a texture in Photoshop and create and apply a texture in Photoshop. In this video I'm going to show you how to add more realism by, apply, by applying grunge and painted decals that look weather worn and also how to do some color matching on the various parts of your texture. So let's get started. As you can see I've added some worn painted uh, effects here on the crate and I've also added what's called grunge. You can see it looks kind of dirty and that just tends to add more realism. I also did some color matching on these board ends to make them more closely match the rest of the board texture. So let's go to Photoshop for a second. Here's the texture that we created. So let's go to Photoshop. Here's the texture that we created. If you take a look here you can see that I've added these painted uh, worn and painted um, lettering and, and insignia here. I've also added the grunge layer and I've done some more color matching. Here is the layer that contains the worn insignia and here is a grunge layer. These stenciled letters are simply a type from Photoshop and this is an actual PNG file that I found on the internet. If you download a PNG file, you need to make sure it's an actual PNG and that it has an alpha channel so that the background is transparent. You also need to be careful. You also need to be careful on some of these um, free graphics websites as to which download button you're clicking because they want you to download apps and all kinds of other things and they put download buttons all around the images to uh, kind of make sure that you accidentally click them. So be careful with that. So let me show you how to do this. Um, here is an insignia that I found on the internet and I'm going to place it on the ends here. So I'm going to select this entire thing by hitting uh, Control A on a PC, Command A on a Mac. Then I'm going to copy it with Command C and go to the Photoshop file and paste it in as a new layer. As you can see it's quite large so I'm going to have to make it smaller <clears throat> now in order to make this look weathered and also to make it match the rest of the things that are painted on here. I'm going to add a layer style and what a layer style does it allows you to do lots of things but what I want to do is do a color overlay and I'm going to create my color overlay and make it sort of very light gray like that. And then I'm going to make it look weathered. And to make it look weathered, we have to find this layer here. And here it is. And we have to get, um, we have to make a selection. And the selection tool we're going to use is something called the select by color range here. And then what we do is that gives us a little eyedropper here and we're going to select a color and you can see that that creates selection. Now when I click OK you can see what that did. However, it selected sort of around my uh, decal here which I don't want. So I'm going to go up to the top here. I know where this layer is. I'm going to turn it off and then I'm going to go back down to that layer and continue to do a color range selection. 
and I'm just going to grab that same color again. Maybe I'll try another one. So what, I need to do, <clears throat> so what I need to do is go over here and turn off that decal layer and then create a new selection. And now you can see it's selected um, despite the decal. So I'm going to turn the decal back on and then I'm going to select the decal layer and hit delete on the keyboard. And you can see what that did. Now that um, did a little too much, I think. Um, so let's undo that. Undo that selection. I just hit Command Z a few times. And let's try another selection. That's still a little much. I think maybe I'm going to try inverting the selection, and this is another thing you can try. We'll turn this back on now. Select this layer and give it a try. That's better. And when I hit deselect, you can see that this is quite weathered. The other thing we need to do is change the uh, blending mode. Let's try soft light so that it shows so that this layer shows through so that the so that the wood grain shows through another thing we need another thing we need to do is change the blending mode so that the wood grain will show through Another thing we need to do is change the blending mode so that, so that the wood grain shows through the paint a little bit. Uh, what I used before here was soft light, so I'm going to use that again. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity down just a little bit. And then, of course, since the other end is identical, I can just duplicate this layer and zoom out some. And then move it over to the other side. Now we're also, now we're also going to add grunge to the ends because I didn't do that to the ends. So to add grunge, you simply find a grunge map, and you can just simply do an internet search, and it needs to be black and white like this. And then you just simply open it up, select all by hitting Command-A or Control-A on a PC, and then you paste it in. Whoop, sorry. And then you copy it by hitting Command-C or control C on a PC and paste it in and it's going to be huge so I'm going to make it smaller and then I'm going to just simply put it so that it covers the two layers the two uh, pieces that I want so that it covers the two pieces that I want to apply it to. And then all we have to do is change the blending mode. Multiply usually works really well. And then we can adjust the opacity down a, little, a lot.
and you can see that that adds sort of dirt to the outside. Now when you're done with this, of course, any changes you make, you need to re-export your um, texture, and you need to overwrite and you need to overwrite the previous version or create a new version if you want to. I'm going to create a new version. I'm going to call this um, 02. And then we return to Maya and find the material, select the color slot, and find the new texture that you exported. And of course, here is the new application. So that's how you add grunge and weathered uh, painted elements. To do color matching, what you need to do is find the element that you want to work with. And this is the board ends element that I created in this folder here where a whole bunch of all of these were in here like eight or ten or twenty of them and what I did was I merged the layers merged layers and I made them all one layer so that I could adjust them and then what you do is you come up to image adjustments and you adjust these settings so that it matches the ones I use most are levels and that allows you to adjust the blacks, the midtones, and the whites independently. I use um, curves often, and that allows you to adjust the master channel and the red, the green, and the blue independently. I also use exposure sometimes and I tend to use hue and saturation. Now hue and saturation is a good one because you can desaturate a color that might be too, you take it all the way to black and white, but you, that might be too vivid. You can also say if this was too red, you can desaturate just the reds. You can also increase the lightness of individual channels. You can bring the yellows back up. So that's a very useful tool. So what you need to do is merge your pieces that you want to color match or select them. Make them one layer or not. If it's just one piece you don't need to do that obviously. Just select it. And you need to go to image adjustments and you need to use these tools here to make the colors look similar. The tools you use will vary depending on the situation and you just need to experiment. And in the next video I'm going to show you how to create a normal map in Photoshop. It's surprisingly easy. And I'll see you then.